In any role in life, I believe, if you want to be the best at it, you've got to be obsessed by it, you've got to give your life it, you've got to live it, you've got to breathe it, you've got to be that going to go, willing to go that extra mile just where certain people aren't willing to go. Because if you want to get to where anyone can come in a gym and kick the pads and spar and do this, but when they're tired, it depends, are they willing to do another round? Are they going to get back on the pads afterwards? When you can't breathe anymore, you know, you've been hurt to the body in the middle of a, like round 10 of sparring and a fresh opponent comes in, are they going to get out? Are you going to stay in and you're going to keep going? So obsession is massively important in anything, not just fighting, just in any walk of life where you want to be successful. Today, we're joined by two legends in one of the most brutal sports in the world, Jonathan Haggerty and Liam Harrison, talking about what it is to be a warrior. Today's video was made possible at mulliganbrothers.com where you can now get the new Memento Mori poster, a poster to remind you that you are mortal and one day you will die. It has 80 years worth of tiny, tiny little squares and each square represents a week of your life. You shade it up until the age that you are and then shade in another box every single week. And remember, one week there is a box on there somewhere that you will not shade in. If that does not get you motivated to live passionately but with purpose, I don't know what will. If you want a reminder that you are going to die, then get the poster in the link down below at mulliganbrothers.com where you can get 10% off if you use code STOIC right now. But before that, what does it take to be a warrior in one of the most brutal sports in the world? Let's find out. So for somebody who's not into Muay Thai, how would you describe the sport? Beautiful. The best. Um, Muay Thai is the art, we call it the art of eight limbs. You've got your feet, your knees, your elbows, your punches, everything really. It's, it's beautiful. Good sport. It's a respectful sport as well. You know, there's that respect behind it. Tradition. Um, I advise everyone to watch Muay Thai. They'll love it. They'll fall in love like I did. I knew just as soon as I had my first fight, I thought that was amazing. There'd never been no adrenaline in rush like it in football or anything like that, which is what I was playing at the time. And I just thought, I thought, wow, I, I would love this to be my life. And I remember watching some of the fighters who were the top level then back in that day and they were all getting fights abroad and they were in this magazine that I used to buy every week from WH Smith and I used to see them in this magazine and I used to think oh, I want my face on there I'd love to love to be on the front cover of that magazine like some of these guys are so yeah it just it just took over my life totally um, like I say some mornings I would just run to school as my fitness uh, and on, uh, as soon as school finished I'd run back home and then from there I'd just run to the gym so that were helping out my fitness for football and for my fighting and stuff as well. I'd be in here every chance I got like and my mates were saying oh you're coming out tonight I said nah I can't I'm in the gym I'll be here literally like four or five nights a week. What, um, what sort of dedication if somebody, say, if somebody said I want to get one championship I want to be at the top how would you if you was to not put them off but tell them the truth of what it takes to get to that level how would you describe that? Sacrifice and if you're young the, the most downfall is your friends, they invite you out. That was the, with me, I turned everything down. I missed out on sort of party in life. Uh, sacrifices, I stopped everything to get to where I wanted to be. And it paid off. You know what, when most kids are like 15 and 16, they're probably gonna be on park getting pissed and stuff like that. I, I missed a lot of that, and, but it's not like a bad thing. It was a good thing, this kept me away from doing all that. Don't get me wrong, the odd night where I, got a bit pissed and stuff like that but what my dad used to do is if I were ever getting out of line he wouldn't like take my playstation away or do anything like that he'd march me down here and Richard would say to me right if you carry on doing this you're not allowed to train and I'd be like fucking hell I'm not I'm not allowed to say that I'm like oh no I'm not allowed to train I better behave myself because if this were gone this were the biggest part of my life gone and I would not have known what to do with myself so like I never got grounded I, just, you know, I never got anything like that he just brought me down here and said right can't train if you carry on messing about on the street or drinking or being bad. So that just wiped out a lot of that aspect of my, my junior life. Obviously, as I got older and my friends are going out and stuff, I've had to miss a lot of things like parties and nights out and stuff like that. But I wouldn't change it for the world, you know. You can go out on the piss anytime, but like for the, the life I've led and the, con the experiences I've had and stuff like that, I would not change a thing. I have sacrificed a lot and I probably missed out on a lot, but I've gained a lot more. You know, you do need to sacrifice. You can't do partying or whatever, ever. You need to be level-headed on one goal. Which was good as well because, like I said before, like you said, there's a bit of a rough area, so like there's kids getting up to mischief a lot around here. So it took me off the streets. It taught me discipline. It 
it taught me a lot of things, but uh, yeah, I was obsessed by it from an early age. I mean, it's not been a smooth ride, I'm guessing, right? So, tough, tough days, how are you getting through them? Sleep. <laughs> tough days. Just grit, just grit my teeth, really. You know, and um, just think tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow will be better. And, uh, and I'll have that one championship belt in no time. Is that it? I'm obsessed, it, oh, isn't no, it? No, no, I love it, I love yeah, it. That's, that no, it? Seriously, yeah, seriously, that's it, you know? That's, that's the belt that everybody wants, you know, and that's... I'm a, I'm a fighter, and um, that is the pinnacle of Muay Thai. So why not be obsessed to getting that belt? I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. It's key in anything in life, in any role in life, I believe. If you want to be the best at it, you've got to be obsessed by it. You've got to give your life it. You've got to live it. You've got to breathe it. You've got to be that going to go, willing to go that extra mile just where certain people aren't willing to go. Because if you want to get to where anyone can come in a gym and kick the pads and spar and do this, but when they're tired, it depends, are they willing to do another round? Are they going to get back on the pads afterwards? When you can't breathe anymore, you know, you've been hurt to the body in the middle of a, like round 10 of sparring and a fresh opponent comes in, are they going to get out? Are you going to stay in and you're going to keep going? So obsession is massively important in anything, not just fighting, just in any walk of life where you want to be successful. So the, the pain, does you know, going through the rounds, does that eventually start to seep back in? Like I said, I don't, think I, I don't, I don't feel anything in there. You literally don't. You won't believe it, obviously, because... But it's after the fight you feel it. Me elbow. I've had one fight before. I had an elbow war. So I woke up the next morning. I couldn't even straighten my arms. And my arms were just locked because of swelling. Feet. It's just brutal. What he did, Roy, in that first fight, he stopped me in round three with leg kicks. And uh, he came out in round one and he started straight away to try and blast my leg to bits. In the first fight, I sat down after round one and my leg was in agony. And by the end of round five of him still kicking my fight in the rematch, I couldn't feel a thing still, but my mindset was so mentally strong then. I think he could have hit me with an iron bar in that fight and I wouldn't have felt it. After the fight, he hit me with a left hook in round four and he wobbled me a bit. And I remember thinking, oh shit, if he hits me again here, I might go. And I said to myself in my head, just call him on, he won't know. So I went, come on. And he just stopped and I thought, oh, I got away with that one. After the fight, the ambulance had to come and take me to hospital because I passed out in the after party and I got to, to hospital, I'd stay in overnight and I had a really bad concussion. And that was with how hard he hit me in round four, but I, would, I was in such a, a mental focus that it didn't even have any effect till after the fight. In the fight, if you're feeling pain, you can't show that you're, you're, hurt, you're hurt. Otherwise, you're, they'll capitalise on that. You need to just get on with it. After the fight, you can cry all you want. Getting out of your comfort zone is massively important. And again, that, that comes down to the same thing as obsession. I've, I think you can't just be comfortable in what you're doing. You need to be out of your comfort zone. Like in training, you need to be in six or to eight weeks out of your comfort zone. Otherwise, when you fight, it's going to be healthier. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just, I wanted to be like, I said before, I don't want to be like a, a big fish in a small pond. I wanted to go over there and I went to a gym called Jitty Gym and it had a lot of Thai champions in at the time and top level guys. So I wanted to, to live like they did. I wanted to train how they did, and um, for the first like three, four weeks until I got used to it, it was it were hell. I was living on a mattress on the floor, just like the ties did. And I'd, I said to them, just treat me how you, how you treat anyone else. And they did, I, they had me fighting every three, four weeks, um, which I loved. Um, but yeah, it, it, was, it got tough at some points because I was out there fighting for money as well. I was only 18 when I went, I'd not had too much money saved up. Um, I just went out there and I was fighting for money. At one point, I was like, I'd be running low on money. If my body's a bit banged up and I'm injured, it didn't matter, I had to fight. You either fight or go home. So that's what I did. I just used to fight as, as often as I could, as regular as I could. I worked on the things I want that was good at, as like clinch work, like the ties are masters of it. And the Westerners are okay, but they're not as good as the ties. I clinched every day with like Thai champions. Um, I made sure again, like, there were a Thai trainer there called Rajasak. Training finished at 6 p.m. every night. It was three in the afternoon till 6 p.m. I were always there at 6.45, still doing bits of extra work with him, um, trying to bring myself up because these guys over in Thailand, they've all been doing it since six years old. It's second nature to them. So I'm trying to catch them up. So if I've got, that means staying late while everyone else is eating dinner, that's what I'm willing to do. Thank you so much to these two legends. And luckily we have lined up another project with Liam Harrison to create something special 
talking more about the Warriors mindset and more stories from Liam coming very soon. And if you want to support projects like that in particular, head down to mulliganbrothers.com with a link in the description where you can now get the Memento Mori posters, a poster to remind you that you are mortal and one day you will die. There's tiny little boxes that you shade off every single week of your life. And remember one day there is a box on there somewhere where you will not shade it in. It could be tomorrow, could be all the way at the bottom, but at some point you will not shade in another box. And if that doesn't get you motivated, I don't know what will. So if you use code STOIC right now with the link in the description, you will get 10% off your Memento Mori poster. Guys, thank you so much to all the support that we've had on Instagram. Um, everybody who's followed me, at Jordan Mulligan River and at Mulligan Rivers, I hope you guys are getting enough free content and the extra promotional content and all that kind of stuff that you're seeing. Thank you so much. I hope that is rewarding. And if you haven't already, go follow us. And thank you to everybody who's become a channel member as well. Thank you so much to everybody who has watched this video in particular. For me, uh, in, in life, I've always felt that having a warrior's mindset or some kind of lethality to you is extremely important, especially being able to use your hands. Um, I personally feel that knowing how to use my hands, knowing that my body is physically capable, means that I have this confidence about me that is a very important thing, I think, to be able to carry around with you. It's not that you're gonna inflict this on people, but you know, as a baseline, you can defend yourself. As a baseline, you can defend your family, your friends. There is no fear around that, which allows you to concentrate on other things. It allows you to concentrate on being confident uh, and trying to be successful. I encourage people to look into combat training in some kind of aspect, and also physical training and strength training. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.